everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. This is Jeremiah's J Man Monero J Man Seminars coming to you live with J Man's Ed Talks. We are coming to you live from San Diego, California, Ooh. at the Wyndham Bay. San Diego. Bayside. Bayside. San Diego. San Diego. <laughs> and, and today we're talking about Wabi Sabi. Wabi Sabi. Wabi Sabi. W A B I S A B I. Right. You What's your Japanese? Japanese? Yes, I do sometimes. Well, when I'm hanging out with Evan, he teaches me things. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's fantastic. Japanese, um, origami, the other one. And what was the, the other? Breaking it and putting it back together. Oh, yeah. So wabi sabi is this like Japanese um, kind of, I, I think it's a, like an aesthetic, an appreciation for things that are uh, imperfect. So there's this art form called kintsugi, I think it's pronounced. And I, seriously, I'm not an expert, but this, uh, it's the thing where if you've seen it where they have like, uh, Pottery that's been broken, like normally we would throw it away, art that's shattered, no good. Um, it's actually the uh, mending of art like that, using gold and other kinds of like fancy stuff, and then appreciating, like reassembling it, and then appreciating like this cracked pot that has gold seams in it or whatever, actually is a more beautiful object because of the flaws and the, you know, yeah, right? I, 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 I found it to be very fascinating. I learned something new today. What you could do with crack pottery and appreciating <laughs> appreciating the imperfections of of something or maybe someone. I thought crack pottery right, was something no, else. Is that something? A crack a crack pot? A crack, 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 crack. <laughs> but, but celebrating imperfections, I guess that would be the, the, the key to what we're talking about here. Like I think too often as agents, as speakers, as instructors, as trainers, we're, we're focused on perfection rather than I always say you know, focus on progress, not perfection. Just getting a little right. bit better each and every time. And I think what you were saying is like, what makes you different is also why somebody should hire you. Is that like, what's yeah. your MVP? What's your unique value? Exactly. Yeah. And I think the separation would be, um, it, it, it's not necessarily the pursuit of perfection is not necessarily better. Right? And that's the point. So here we were doing some like instructor stuff here while we're in San Diego. We're talking about appreciating the differences of the people who are in the room. Um, and then yourself not trying to be perfect and like be polished and like, you know, who somebody else wants you to be, but being you. Um, but in our business, like, you know, when we're talking with uh, buyers agents, doing buyer consultations, right? what is it that makes you, you know, there's 1.3 million realtors across the country. You know what the number, if you bring in the other non-realtor licenses, you know the number is? No. Over 2 million wow. across the country, right? Oh, so that is the thing. I always thought there yeah. were more. Yeah, yeah so it's a lot, right? So the idea is, okay, what makes you different than the other two? Well, I, I think that, again, going back to the imperfections of that pottery, yeah. right? we stand out because we have those designations, those specialties that we bring to the table. And that's probably what keeps us different amongst our peers, or keeps us, uh, you know, we stand out amongst our peers in that, in that sense that we have something, even as instructors, we can educate, inspire others to make that, what you call the core difference, you know, to, to show a difference to the to and, and give that difference to the world, you know. And so here's what I would say. <laughs> you did. You wrote that. Yeah, no, you wrote that. that. Yeah, I mean, what he's talking about earlier, we're saying, like, why did we do this? Like, why did I wake up at 3 o'clock this morning, Eastern Standard Time, to come to California? Are you still riding the train? I'm still on the right edge train until my train falls off the rails because the top will fall off any moment now. And so it's it's to make a difference, right? I'm not coming here just to share tech tools with my fellow trainers and instructors. It's to know that I can present something to, to some folks, my colleagues, and, and in the spirit of collaboration, which is, which is what our theme is here at the RIA Conference 2018, is to collaborate and help others. Not to just right. come and share a list of stuff. You can just Google that stuff. And, Right, to not. Well, I thought it was interesting that you and I landed in the same place about change, right? And uh, you know, the idea of like if we if you get up at three in the morning, come all the way here, um, look at the beach out there, but you can't touch it because you don't have time, right? You go home, and right. nothing has changed. Like, dude, just stay home. And what was the purpose? Yeah. Right. 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 All right. So we got that covered. So what I was going to say to you yeah. is designation. I mean, you know, I'm I'm a down for professional development, but one thing that I think. Um, about you is like when you're not afraid to show your heart, you're not afraid to 
like uh, you know, be emotional and that kind of stuff. And for a lot of people, that'd be like, oh no, I got to be perfect. I got to be made out of stone, you know. Right. So that's kind of what we're talking about. Is that maybe perceived as yeah. an imperfection? But that's what makes you try to keep it real amongst our peers, amongst our you know our agents out there. I'm trying to keep a, a level of transparency that has no limits. It's just fully transparent. And I think that when you teach that, you also teach that to an agent who will show that to his, his or her consumer, right? I think the consumer will come from a level of trust rather than a level of distrust. Well right? said. Keep going. I like I that, Joe. Keep going with that. Well, I think that's a, that's a great quality to have as far as, you know, something that I'd like to keep inspiring to a lot of people, a lot of, of our fellow instructors out there, to our fellow uh, uh, spread that knowledge amongst everyone rather than you know having the stereotype loom over us as uh, unprofessionals and people that just take from communities and just sell 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 with just we're more than realtors as we say back home you know? i love it yeah i love it i like that uh, i like it too <laughs> <laughs> lighting the candle there's a there's a Inspirational quote about that. So yes, yeah, yeah, that's why I got a live Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you get off a conference room wall? No, no, no. No, 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 no I got the Hallmark part once. I liked it so much that I oh, used it a lot to when I when I meet a great instructor, a great speaker, or, or somebody who is passing their knowledge to me, and then I go, wow, that, that person just passed their 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 candle to me, and I'm gonna now pass my you know, and, and relight it and relight it until it spreads because like that fire. Well, it can only it can only amount to you know uh, much more professionalism in our business in our industry, and that's something that I've always try strive and continue to strive to do even to you know today in, in our in our teaching world. Is that yeah. it? I, I just shut you up down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that I was there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's, we talk about UVP and like what makes you different, celebrating, you know, and I could talk on this because I started in business 25 years old and I, and I thought that I had to be perfect, more professional, shirt, tie, do what they wanted me to do, be, be, be professional. And then when I finally just said, I'm just going to be me, like that's when I found my greatest successes, whether it was speaking, training, instructing. Or in real estate, I embrace the fact that I'm young and I was younger. I'm younger now. We had an ER. It's like, yeah. you know, like in real estate, when you have a newer kitchen, it's like 10 years old, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, celebrating that, and then I have a fresh perspective and then, you know, I'm forward thinking, like, what makes me different is, is part of what makes me better. Right. I think it's but different. you know what pisses me off is that, no, I don't tell me. Well, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Show the passion. What makes you mad? Tell us. Well, you, I mean, you have it down and you're continuing to develop it for you, but the typical, um, the average agent, like on the street, they're not good at even like saying what they do, which is different than they do a lot, right? But if you just tap somebody on the shoulder and go, hey, why should I hire you? Or what do you do exactly? Why do I need you? Um, a lot of times you're going to get crickets. And then maybe like tumbleweeds going through the room, you know what I mean? Especially in Arizona. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but it's not, it's not exclusive to Arizona. I know you're making a joke, but it's everywhere. I mean, I teach all over the country. And people get scared when you ask that question. And this is a problem. Oh, here I go. This is a problem in the industry because we have all the people rather complain about I buyer, Zilla, open thing, all these right. things. It's like, no, what do you do? You know, and you have to know, and you have to play it up. One of the lessons here at, at RIA was that um, in the IDW, the Instructor Development Workshop that we took yesterday, was that uh, we were asked to get up in pairs and tell each other what special interests we had. So we, it was a getting to know you. And uh, the exercise dealt with a couple of questions, and, and it was led by uh, Bruce Moya and Teresa uh, Barnaby. Barnaby? Barnaby? Barnaby. I, I, I always screw up her name anyway. Um, so 
they, they gave us three different questions and, and they and three different exercises and it got me at least to know who my partner was and what she did other than real estate right and i think that that uh, the takeaway from that is is that i want to get to know i want my students to get to know each other and i want them to know i want them to to tell that to people like what else besides selling real estate do you, who are you and if they understand and they go like this one the human side <laughs> human the human, human side. not an h i think it's it's the human. Human. i think it's it's human. Human. It's Human side of you, know, uh, you know, I think that uh, they'll, um, you know, they'll, they'll trust you a little lot yeah. better. You know, oh, don't there's no doubt down to that. I think it goes back to authenticity that we've been kind of it's been our theme that right. all of us that we're speaking now is the same as if you had dinner with us, the same as if you saw us in the classroom, it's the same as if you came to list your house or where you as a buyer. But so. Like, it's, <laughs> Thanks a lot. I was in a you know, great message, and this is a good example. I'm just trying to derail the message, but you know what? Because stay, I'm showing stay true my to it. Oh, your side. Yeah. So. Stay true to what you're talking about. But I mean, really, it's an exercise in like, what do you do different? What do you bring to the table that if you were in an elevator and you had, they call it an elevator speech for a reason, right? If you hop on the elevator with somebody right now, and they go, oh, you're in real estate. I'm thinking about selling. I think about buying. You have until they get to the next floor to convince them to work with you. Besides the fact that real estate marketing is great. Right. 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 That's right. the market. Yeah. And Amazing. that's the robotic image that you portrayed before. You know, that people expect people, the realtors, to be a certain way and robotic. And certainly, you know, we're not robotic and we're not robotic as instructors as well. We, we inspire and, and we want. What makes people. you different, Joe? Uh, what makes me different? You mean with the style that I bring to the table, or what all makes me different book. all around? I think that I think I'm more. I, I have my answer for you, but I'm waiting to see if you can come up with. I, I think I'm very down to earth. I think I I try to infuse that that humor <laughs> and that comical side of me, but um, I think it's not it's not raw talent. It's it's something that. Is just in me to to you know I'm very passionate about what I do. Uh, there it is, folks. <laughs> That's the hot topic that I, I had it in my head right there. Passionate, so passionate about real estate. Like I tell people on stage or in groups, I'm passionate about real estate. Like I tell people on stage or in groups, I say I love real estate like Oprah loves bread. You know, I just love real estate. It's there. I I I, I don't want to. Well, well, I, I won't change who I am. I won't change my profession. This is something that I've redefined in the last five years alone, and it's exciting. It's as, it's, it's, a, it's as exciting as it was the day I got my license, and that spark is back, and it's great, and it's you know it's reignited. And wow! Wow! Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like Rocky he goes back to the well, gym. He reinvents wow. himself. Well, know? I think that's a good core, but you know. Like there's no substitute for passion, right? If you're not passionate about it, if you don't love real estate, if you don't love what you do, my advice is quit. That's right. <laughs> I'm gonna put it to you just like that. You should leave the business, you should go work for somebody, get a salary, and help them achieve their dreams because real estate's not for you. That's my message. How about that? And and, I like and more importantly, if you're not doing what you love, right? Then quit. Then get out of the business and let the people who want to shine come through the aisle that's still crowded with unprofessionalism. Uh, what's this? So tell, tell me this. this. <laughs> tell me this. <laughs> this the robot talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, what's that? the thing that we always talk about? The, you know, people don't care how much you know until you show them how much you care. Pretty close. All right. <laughs> people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So, like before. Is that what I said? But it's it's like people don't care, like your designation don't matter, your experience don't matter, your market share, none of that will matter if they don't see how much you really care. Right. Like it's it's about the relationship, not the transaction. Well and, and so that's a great uh, kind of segue because I think um, you might get them the one time, right? Right. But they're not gonna come back, they're not gonna send their Friends. I mean, I don't know. Do you guys have clients that you're friends with that yeah. become part of your life oh, and all totally. that? You know, there's some people that you're like, I can't wait for this transaction to end and get you out of my life. <laughs> that happens occasionally, right? But it, it, 
it's the people that you bond with, make a connection with, and like you said, I have like really second and third families of, of what I used to call clients, and now it's not friends, a they're, they're friends. No, and it's, no, it's great. <laughs> no, it's great because I, I hear what you said. Yeah. You bond with these people. It's wonderful. Well, and from a practical standpoint of like you know running a business. Um, going through the effort to attract the client and then not making that bond and then they have to go find a new client instead of like getting repeat business and just, you know, we've all been in the business long enough to, I think, appreciate the value of return to clients and having that, that base, you know? Um, so, I'm wondering if we have any video on the screen at all. What's happening? Are you monitoring your... Uh, Interesting. <laughs> we went through that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. I think it's pretty good whether we're recorded or not. Exactly. I think it's time for dinner, guys. What do you think? I think it's time. All right. Good talk. No, it was a good talk, actually. Whether I think at the very least we can have the audio. No, no, not the video and the audio, considering how long the band for the sure, but the audio might work. The band. Oh, kind of hot, though. No. Well, anything you want to say in closing? We're yeah, close to the Still going. Close yeah. to the Make a plan and engage in consistent action with those companies. Whoa, that's pretty good. I got a the teeth there. Yeah. Let's go to the last round thing. Do you have another last round quote? No, I don't have a last round quote. Damn, I have one. We'll do we'll, Go ahead. Okay. Let's do the things today that others won't do so that tomorrow we can have what others won't have. Woo! That How about Lou Holtz? I got Lou Holtz. Is that close enough? Yeah. yeah. All right. You know, his three to live by, right? Do do right, do the right thing. Do your best in the time allotted, and show people you care. Blue Holtz, baby. Dude, Notre Dame. Yeah, Notre Dame. Okay. And, and like three or four other programs. I mean, but he's not. Right. <laughs> all right, folks. So thanks for tuning in. Maybe you didn't tune in. Maybe you can't see us at all. But it doesn't matter because we're here for you. Millennium Who Talks is the other show. This is actually J Man's Ed Talks. Number two, and uh, we're out. <laughs> Thanks. Jim nailed it. Good work, my man. <laughs>